Welcome to the 576 pixels gallery. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can get this vase to rotate via a button press and then that'll give us access to the flowers on the other side when we're painting. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to create an invisible object that makes this centered because these flowers come out at an off-center amount. So what we're going to do is go to our build tools. If you haven't already, go to your settings, go to build settings and slide grid snap size down to zero. And then let's go over and grab a cylinder. And we're gonna take this cylinder, it doesn't need to be very thick, but it does need to be extra wide, wide enough that it covers the entire pot of flowers. From there, make sure your snapping is on. And because we've now set it to be zero on it where it snaps to the grid, we use the snap controls, and that's that orange center point right here. And now when we drag from that orange center point, we can come down here to the bottom and find the center point on that vase. And now that we've snapped to the center of the vase, this is now larger than our flowers. So when we group this together, the center will be the center of the vase not the center of wherever the edge of the flowers are. That being said, this would be pretty bad for aesthetics. So we go into the properties. To get to the properties, you put your hand in the object, press up on the joystick towards the ellipses, and that's gonna give you this properties menu. From in here, we can turn off visibility and we can turn off collisions, and that's gonna make it so we can no longer see it, but it'll still give us that center we're looking for. So now when we group, we go through this object first, then we go through the bottom of our vase, our middle vase, second part. And now we could go through and individually select these flowers, but it's much easier if you keep holding down on the pointer, you'll see these plus and minus signs. So if we click the plus by using our joystick to the right, we can now enlarge the selection tool and easily select all the flowers and all of the stems. And so now once we have all of those selected, we can let go of our pointer, put our hand inside and press the joystick to the left to group them together. Now that we've grouped it, we can see the center is at the center of the vase. And then we just grab this rotation tool and we can see what it looks like when it rotates. I have snapping on, so it's snapping in increments. But if I turn snapping off, you can see it smoothly rotate. And so this is wonderful. So I'm going to undo that by using the undo button. That's your joystick to the left. And now that we have this all set up, let's go ahead and write a script. And so I think I initially had said we'd do it with a button press, but I'd really like it to feel more natural, like you're just rotating the vase of flowers, like if you touch it with your hand. And so if we build this trigger and we just put it right outside the vase, like right here, and then what we're gonna do again is use that snap tool. And if we grab the snap tool, probably from the top edge and then put it right there, and then I'm finding the center point of our vase grouping, and that's giving me exactly where I want that trigger. That just happens to be right. Like if I want it to be a little more accurate, I can click on this and then I can grab the square at the bottom and grab this square at the bottom and then drag it down. And I can even link it to the edge if I find the edge of this. There we go. So I can use my snapping tools to link it to the scale that I'm looking for. And I could even come up here and bring this down a little bit because I don't want necessarily the brush setting it off and then maybe scale it to here so it only works on the lower part of the vase. So you kind of have to press down here. Okay, so that's where we're gonna have player interaction with the vase. Now that we have our trigger set up, we need a script. So if we pull out this script block and we go in here, the first thing we should do is name our script so it doesn't get lost. So we're gonna name this rotate vase. Now that we have it named, we grab this and then pull down to delete. And then we're gonna grab when trigger is entered by player because that's what's happening. When a player's hand enters this trigger, that's when we're gonna have the set off. We're going to attach this script into the trigger. And to do that, we simply come down here to the trigger, press forward to get the properties menu. And then, oops, undo, undo is your friend. And then from the properties menu, we click on the attach script dropdown and you'll see at the bottom, we have rotate vase now. And now from here, we can also see that triggering is currently on players, so that's perfect. We have it enabled, so that's great. And then what do we wanna do when the trigger's entered? Well, we want to rotate the vase, but this trigger isn't connected to the vase. So to connect to it, we go to our variables tab, we click new variable, and this is going to be an object variable, and we'll call this vase. 
but then we want to know how much do we want to rotate. Perhaps we want this to be something that we can change from inside the object properties. So if we click new variable and we grab a rotation, then this rotation can be set from inside of the object properties. Rotate by. And now what do we want to rotate by? Well, if we come to our object here and you look at the top of it, we can see that this is the Z. It's hard for you to see in the video, but there's a Z on this. And we put our hand in here. We know we want to use the Z rotation. So that's this double headed arrow. From our script, what we want to do is rotate on the Z. So we go X, Y, Z. And under Z, we're going to rotate this by 10 every time the player puts their hand in. But how fast do we want to do that? So we're going to create another variable, and this is going to be called time. And by creating these as variables, you can then adjust them without having to come into your script. That's the benefit here. And so we're going to set this to rotate over half a second because it's not a, it's not a large rotation. So we just want it to quickly rotate. And then you can hit it again to rotate it again to get to the other side if you wanted to do it several times. If you really want this to be fast, you could set this to be 90 degrees and we'll try that out as well. So let's go into our motion tab and we're going to get, you'll see instant motion up here. So if you wanted it to rotate instantly, use this one and then you don't have to worry about time. We're going to be using rotate by over time. It's important to distinguish between rotate to and rotate by. Rotate to rotates to an angle specifically. So if we did it rotate to 10, it's going to be locked at 10. It's never going to rotate 10 further. So rotating by just adds 10. If you wanted to have more accurate rotations, I highly recommend using rotate to and creating a new variable that incre increments your rotation. That way you have full control over how much you're rotating by. We're gonna grab rotate by, drag it here underneath trigger enter, and we're not going to keep this rotation by 90 over one second, and it's not gonna be on self. So this is where our variables come into play. So from our variables, we're gonna grab vase, drop that on self because this is happening on the vase. We're going to grab rotation by and drop that here on the rotation. And then we're going to grab time and drop that here on seconds. And now that we have this all set up, our script is completely finished. So what we're going to do is close out of here. We're then going to come down to our script and you're going to see all of our variables have arrived. And you'll notice our vase is not tagged. It says none here. And so what we need to do is open up the properties panel on our vase. Once the property panels is open, we grab this reference cable and we pull that down into this receiving cable end. And now we've connected that group of 24 objects. So if we come in here as a player, and I like to do this by pushing forward on the joystick, holding until you see the line with a circle, and then you're brought in. And if we just lightly tap, you can see it rotates. And 10 degrees, definitely too slow, especially for this instance. So you can see that it's, yeah, it's cool but we should definitely go to 90. So if we come back to our trigger properties, we'll see that we have rotate by listed in here at 10. And if we go and hit the backspace, we can change this to 90 and then press enter. And now we'll see that we're gonna rotate by 90 degrees over half a second. So this is gonna be a lot more intense. So let's come back in here as a player. We come to our vase. Wow, what is that? That is a rotation if I've ever seen one. But that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. I almost want it to be a little bit slower though. Like I think the time of half a second might be a little too fast. So let's go in here and click on our time and change this to be one and then press enter. Then come back in here as a player. There it is. Wonderful. That's exactly what I was looking for. This is amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.